Welcome to our service this week as we think about St Mary. As we begin, I invite you to pray. Almighty God, whose Son called her to be a witness to his resurrection, forgive our sins and heal us by your grace, that we may serve you in the power of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we join together in our confession. Our God and Father, we confess with shame that we have come short of your glory. We have not done what we ought to have done. We have remained deaf to the cries of those who hurt. We have remained dumb in the face of evil. We have allowed the shadow of death to hover over the innocently condemned. We have failed to proclaim with power and conviction your liberation for the oppressed. We repent in your grace and mercy. Forgive us. Renew us in mind, heart and spirit. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins. Heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise to the new life, raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Madeleine came to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know, do not know where they have laid him. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was him. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to his disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that what he had said and the things he had said to her. So, to begin with, Mary, the myths and the truths. Mary was someone who followed Jesus. That is true. Mary was not a prostitute. That has become a myth. Mary was in the close circle of Jesus' disciples. That is true. Mary was healed of many demons. That is a myth. Mary is mentioned in all four Gospels. That is true. 
Mary's last name is Madeleine, which is a myth. Mary was from the region of Magdala. That is true. So it seems that we may not know a lot about Mary. There are still some things that we do not know. But there are some things that we do know. We need to also put to one side all the things that have been made up about her over the centuries. Being mentioned in the four Gospels as we have her being named, especially as a woman at the time in the culture, is very significant. It paints more words than we could ever know about Mary that she is mentioned in all of the Gospels. Mary was in the inner circle of Jesus' disciples and she played a role in supporting his ministry. She was there from the very early part of his ministry like Andrew and Peter and she followed him from region to region over the three years of his ministry. We sometimes think of the misrepresentations that have gone on in the past. Some I have mentioned above, that Mary was the adulterer who washed Jesus' feet, or Mary was the woman who was healed from being possessed by seven demons. The Bible doesn't tell us any of those things. Or if you read Dan Brown, Mary is the wife of Jesus. Again, that is not mentioned in the Bible. The Bible tells us of her diligence, just like the other disciples in following Jesus. It tells us of her tenacity to be at the forefront of what is going on. The Bible also, through what is said, teaches us about Jesus treating women equally in his ministry team. We have the cultural block of names being written more in connection to men rather than women when the disciples were written. Then there have been discovered texts in the mid-1900s, the Gospel of Mary and the Gospel of Philip, written after the Gospels that we have in the Bible but with evidence of more participation of Mary in the ministry of Jesus, to the same as we already understand of Peter, Andrew, James and John. I wonder how many of us, if we just write it down now, could name all 12 disciples, without looking them up, that is. Go on, have a go. I'll give you the answers at the end. Some of the disciples are not mentioned in the Gospels as much as Mary is. Which may lead you to question what their roles were and if they were given the thrones of each of the 12 tribes of Israel, what then does Mary get? The first person to hear that Jesus has been risen in John's Gospel is Mary. So what do we take away from this? Foremost for me is that Jesus had no gender prejudice. So why in some parts of our church do we? Not everything is written down about what Jesus did and the disciples that followed him. Otherwise we would have heard more about the other disciples too. The answer is that we have far more questions than indeed we do answers. However, it is our duty to hold on to the truth that we know and not the myths that we cannot prove. Mary was the one whom Jesus revealed his risen self to. The significant fulfilment of his conquering death and coming back to new life and leading in a new gateway to eternal life. Not at all an insignificant part of our faith and our understanding. For me, from what the Bible tells us, there were some key players around him. 
and Mary was indeed one of them. Like Mary and like Peter, we can be one of those key players too. Listening to his teachings, leading a more Christ-like existence and making sure we keep myths and truth separate and know which is which. So may we hold on to the truth and not the myth and may we follow in the steps of Christ and may we be like Mary, witnesses of his resurrection to others and understanding the truth about eternal life. And so for those of you that have been naming the 12 disciples, they are uh, Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Judas Iscariot, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, Judas, Thomas and James. I invite you now to join with me in prayer. Lord God, through your grace, we are your people. Through your Son, you have redeemed us. In your Spirit, you have made us your own. We pray for that inspired by the example of Mary, we may reach those who find life a struggle. May we stand by you, Jesus, even when life is tough. Make our hearts respond to your love. We pray for the world we live in. May we think of the fragility of our earth and work to restore the damage we have done. Make our lives bear witness to your glory in the world. We pray for those who are ill. May we follow the example of Christ in our lives and listen to those who are lonely in spirit. Make our wills eager to obey and our hands ready to hear. We give you thanks for the things we take for granted in our lives. Help us, Lord, to grow in faith and love. Make our voices with all your people in heaven and earth. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God of life and love, whose risen Son called Mary by name and sent her to tell all of his resurrection. In your mercy, help us, who have been united with him in our service to proclaim the good news that he is alive and reigns now and for ever. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. There is Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen.